All right, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is how to actually pay our vendors or pay a purchase invoice. So this particular process is done from what is called payment journals. So you write payment journals here and click the link and then you get your payment journals here. So I'm going to explain the very, very most basic way to pay uh, an invoice. There are all sorts of uh, functionality which makes it easier to pay large amount of invoices and uh, make it based on due date and, and uh, the, the, the cash you have available on your bank account and so on and so on. But I'm going to enter a line manually here so that you can uh, get a feel for the, the most basic way to do it. So let's say we want to pay one of uh, the invoices from our domestic vendor. So in the document type we're going to type payment. And um, in the account type over here, we're going to select our vendor. And then we're going to select our vendor number. So our domestic vendor or the domestic vendor that we want to pay something for. And, um, and really the situation that, that we are simulating right now is that you've just uh, been logged on to your online bank account and you have uh, paid your vendor. You can, you can really do this, um, either you can do it uh, before you actually pay your vendor because you know it's going to go through, or you can uh, do this particular operation uh, or process after you've completed the payment in your online bank, or you can do it once you get a conf confirmation that it's gone through. But um, regardless of what, what the timing is, the process would be the same. So once you've indicated that it's for vendor 100 that you want to pay uh, an invoice, you would go to these applies to um, uh, columns here. And what you want to do is first fill out the applies to uh, doc type with an invoice indicating that we want to pay an invoice. And then you click this applies to document number here. And that actually gives you a list of all the unpaid invoices uh, for this particular customer right now. Oh, sorry, uh, invo um, a vendor right now. So let's say we want to pay this um, first invoice up here for those 120. So you just select it and click OK. There, there is another note is that there is also functionality and there's also a method for paying multiple invoices in one go. But um, as I said, right now we're just doing the, the, the simple uh, version. So what happened when we actually chose this um, invoice was that it um, fills out the applies to uh, date here and more importantly it pulls over the, the, the amount. But before we post this we also have to indicate um, from where we are going to pay it and we, this is in this case we were paying from our online bank so we have to specify bank account and then in the balancing account number here, we have to specify which a bank, bank account we're paying from because we could have multiple bank accounts. Um, we just have a single one, so we're going to select our HSBC bank account here. And that really does it for setting up the, the, the payment line. So next we can click post and we'll click yes. And then it just says that document number must have a value. So we'll just go back and give document number. I think either it said that we needed a value or it need, said it, it needed a specific value. Yeah, let's just have a look. So the lines were posted and uh, next we would of course like to see the result of this uh, of this payment. So we're going to go back to our back to our main window here and let's have a look at our vendor first. So we've got one, one vendor who we owe some money and let's have a look at the balance here. So if we click on the balance, we'll see actually only one line and what we can see is that this line, if we scroll out a bit, has nothing to do with, with what we just paid. And that is because uh, a nav has a filter set so that we will not see any uh, irrelevant um, vendor ledger entries. And Nav considers it uh, history or irrelevant once we've uh, paid an, in, an invoice. It's not really part of um, what we, well, it is not part of what we owe this vendor anymore. But if we still want to see the historical uh, invoices and payments, we can, we can um, delete this filter here called open, which is now set to yes. So we delete it. 
and that really reveals the two more lines. So if we have a look at these two lines, we'll see that the first one is uh, the original invoice. So this was the invoice that we uh, registered for this particular vendor. And the other line, which is now revealed, is a payment. And we can see that these two lines have a check mark uh, or have unchecked open. That means uh, implicitly, that means that they are closed. And what we can also see if we, um, if we highlight this one and click Applied Entries, we can see um, which entry it's uh, connected to or applied against. And well, we, we all know now that it's, it's this one because we instructed it to do that. But um, sometimes um, you don't have this uh, overview, so you, you, you want to see which um, uh, uh, vendor ledger entries are applied against each other. So you will highlight this line, and when you click Applied here, you will actually see a reference to the invoice, which is essentially the same line as this one. If we scroll out now, we can see this as no, entry number 5. And if we find the entry number of the top one, we can see that this is also entry number five. five. So what it's saying is that this payment is applied to this invoice. And the, re re the reverse is true as well. If we highlight this one and click Applied Entries, we'll see a reference to the payment which closed it, which is entry 18, which happens to be this one down here. So much for the vendor ledger entries. Um, our payment um, can also be seen in our GL. Actually, if we just go back in and navigate, we'll be able to see what um, GL implications this had. So we've got our vendor ledger entry, which is not this one because it's, it's hidden. So we'll click this one, payment, and we'll click navigate. <clears throat> And we'll see that our GL entries here uh, are two. So we can see that um, it has hit two accounts. The first one here, let's just have a look at that, is our bank account, which makes sense. Um, our bank account has been reduced by 120. And it has also hit our accounts uh, payable here, which has been increased you might say or at least we don't uh, or well depends on how you look at it but at least we now owe less money uh, to our vendors we can also go and have a look at some of the other um, entries that that happened at this time one of uh, interest is this one our bank ledger entries so this is essentially money going in and money going out of our, our bank and we can see that it, our bank account has been reduced to 120. We might also want to go and have a look at our bank account card to see this. And we will actually see the same uh, bank account ledger entry. But let's just uh, try to find that from another perspective. So we go to our bank accounts and our HSBC. And because our bank balance was zero before, we now have a negative balance of 120. And if we click this one, we'll see the same bank account ledger entry.